A lot of people hate Mylon's Secret Castle. On paper, it has all the makings of an NES classic. You're the classic underdog out to rescue the princess. There's a castle to explore where you get to pick which rooms to challenge. Each room is a platforming maze filled with hidden money and power-ups, hidden shops to buy needed items, and a hidden key and door to escape. There's a variety of enemies and obstacles that use predictable patterns that require thought, strategy, and skill to defeat and to figure out how to traverse through a room and find what you're looking for. The rooms are big enough to give you a sense of epic exploration, but small enough that if you're going through them a second time, you can easily make it to the exit quickly. Bosses repeat the same attacks and patterns, but they look cool and offer an amped up challenge as the game progresses. The music is limited too, but it's catchy, iconic, and is a joy to listen to for the long hours this game can take to defeat. And like any good video game character, Mylon grows in his abilities as you progress and is constantly gaining upgrades. So with all this going for it, how did Mylon piss off so many gamers? Well, it's an early NES game, and those are rarely perfect as they were inventing what games would be as they went. There's a few problems that a lot of people tend to have with this game. First of all, the game is cryptic. That's true, but the basics are pretty easy to figure out if you've played other NES games. Shooting walls, shooting the air, and pushing blocks that you conspicuously can't can destroy are all pretty common in NES games. You can figure them out on your own probably, or you can consult hints for the game. The truly cryptic part comes as you get deeper into it and try to figure out which room to go to when. But that's true of most NES adventure games like Zelda, Simon's Quest, Goonies 2, the difference is that they had guides in either Nintendo Power or a section in the Nintendo's Player Guide. I'm not sure why Mylon never got something like that, but the truth is old adventure games on the NES, no matter how good, tended to require guides. A lot of people also take issue with the lack of invincibility frames. This is radically different from most games that give you a few seconds of invincibility when you get hit. This can result in enemies giving Mylon multiple hits upon contact and really amps up the difficulty. But I came to appreciate this odd quirk. It turns even the easiest enemy into a potential game ender and makes you get just that much more aware of their patterns and how to avoid or kill them without touching them. And lastly, people tend to hate that Mylon can't shoot straight, which can take some getting used to in a game that requires precision when shooting blocks. It is very odd, even the adorable illustrations in the game's instruction book show Mylon shooting straight, but like any control scheme, it is something you will get used to and master as the game goes on. I don't necessarily agree that those are major flaws in the game, but some definitely exist. There's numerous things in the game that feel cheap. For instance, when lightning appears outside the castle, it can hit you even as you're entering a door, which seems unfair. The ice tower seems to trap you in a way that makes it impossible for you not to get hit by the bats. Maybe it's something I just never figured out, but how well you make it through there just seems based on luck. And in the room that you get to after the fireplace boss, there is a false floor on the top of the second set of columns. The trick here is to stand on the column and jump over the floor at the top. If you don't, you'll end up in a trap door that will force you out of the room and make you go through the room all over again. Another bit of tediousness is having to rebuild your health when you continue since enemies only give a single heart at a time. Towards the end of the game, you can use a strategy that lets you build up money with the room on the lower right of the third floor, which is the only room where money reappears in, and then use that money to buy health in a store that's in the upper left corner of the third floor. It's still grinding, but it's far quicker. Mylon is cryptic, it's hard, it's flawed, but that comes with being in an NES game sometimes. Overall, it's an imperfect but enjoyable and rewarding experience. I didn't get that far when I rented it for the weekend as a kid, 
But when playing it on the virtual console as an adult, I can't describe how thrilling it was to reach new areas I hadn't gotten to before and ultimately conquer this monster of a game. This is one princess that had been waiting a long time to be saved. For those of you who've played this game and hate it, your opinion is as valid as it gets. But if you hate the game just because you saw it on an Angry Video Game Nerd video, I'd highly recommend playing it before forming an opinion. I don't think James Rolfe intended his AVGN series to create a generation of people who hate games they never played before just because they were in his videos and who go around the internet bashing them whenever they're mentioned because they think it's a cool thing to do. Nothing wrong with criticism, but informed criticism is the best type. Mylon is a different experience, and I like to have those every once in a while. But, of course, your mileage may vary. So anyway, that's my two bits on Mylon's Secret Castle. If you've ever played it, let me know what you think in the comments below and what you think of this review. Like and subscribe for more videos. And until next time, remember kids, life has no strategy guides or invincibility frames.